Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, very good morning to you. I would like to, first of all, express my gratitude to the Wilson Center uh, for inviting me to speak today on this uh, important topic, which is the evolving partnership between Nigeria and the United States in an ever-changing global arena. It is a great honor to address you on the continually evolving partnership between Nigeria and the United States in an ever-changing uh, global arena. We find ourselves at a crucial juncture marked by unprecedented global challenges and transformative opportunities. Nigeria and the United States have a long-standing and robust relationship dating back to our independence in 1960. And since then, the relationship has continued to grow from uh, strength to strength, as illustrated by our significant bilateral trade and cooperation on a wide range of issues. Just yesterday, uh, as has been mentioned, I met with the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, Kurt Campbell, as a follow-up to the very successful 6th Nigeria-U.S. Binational Commission in Abuja to strengthen our partnership on economic growth, security, technology, energy, food security, and multilateral reform. Through engagements such as the Binational Commission, we can and are making progress as a partnership. Our shared values and ambitions, democ democracy, stability, and the commitment to addressing the needs of our peoples provide a strong foundation on which we can build. It is critical that we do so given the current state of international affairs. Today, we're witnessing an increasing complex world increasingly complex world shaped by conflicts, growing polarization, breakdown of long-standing institutions, and significant multi-dimensional challenges, including climate change, terrorism, transnational crime, as well as widespread disinformation. Ongoing developments in the Israel-Palestine crisis continue to draw global attention. Nigeria, like the U.S., believes in a two-state solution and we welcome efforts by the U.S. to broker a ceasefire. But we must not underestimate the strength of feeling in the global south. This is a debate on the streets of Africa and Asia and increasingly in America and Europe. Ordinary people see the images from Gaza and cannot fathom why America helps arm Israel and yet hesitates to support other allies fighting with more restraint against similar radical ideologies. Similarly, there has been a widespread recognition in the U.S. that the persistent conflict in Ukraine challenges the world community to uphold principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity. These are principles that are fundamental to the United Nations Charter and to which our nations are unwaveringly committed. Nigeria was among the first to support the UN General Assembly resolution to condemn the invasion of Ukraine. Our commitment to the principle of strategic autonomy is not counter to, but rather aligns 
with our conviction that the global system must be based on the pursuit of peace, stability and inclusive development. As a student of international relations, I am concerned by the seeming return of great power competition. The importance of neutral ground that provides decision makers and diplomats with the opportunity to meet and diffuse tensions cannot be overstated. Ukraine warns, warns us of the terrible consequences when we miss that opportunity. Nigeria's history of overcoming differences and celebrating our diversity means that we can play such a role, a non-aligned conciliator helping to cool temperatures and prevent dangerous escalation. In many ways, Nigeria is the canary down the coal mine. Insecurity in Nigeria is inextricably linked to instability in the sub-region, which in turn can have a severe impact on global stability through increased terrorism, proliferation of arms, human trafficking, and irregular migration. Looking back to the insurgency carried out by terrorist group Boko Haram, which peaked in 2014, it is easy to see how Nigeria's challenges had an outsized effect on the wider region. These are problems that are best fixed at source. The United States and the rest of the world cannot afford to wait until the problem is on its streets. As the medical profession teaches us, when faced with a potentially danger dangerous disease, it is better to treat the underlying cause and not just the symptoms. We've been fighting violent extremists for 15 years. We've seen the terrible human cost of conflict. The efforts of our gallant military and security officers have seen the terrorist group Boko Haram, as well as its uh, offshoots, severely degraded. Nevertheless, the threat of terrorist organizations and armed groups exploiting instability remains. The decision by Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger to withdraw from ECOWAS threatens ongoing counterterrorism efforts and emboldened military factions as well as armed groups in the region. Well-meaning interventions by some states only exacerbated the situation and led to accusations that Nigeria and ECOWAS were vassals of foreign powers. More positively, we're beginning to see indications that the international community understand, understands its interests are probably best served when it help, helps support African-led solutions to African problems. By contrast, allegations of human rights abuses and killings of Christians, some accurate, some not. Fake news is uh, very much a global phenomenon. Have led countries like the US to refuse to provide Nigeria with necessary arms, undermining our ability to counter terrorism and other major threats. This must change. While we accept that there have been isolated incidents of abuse, the Nigerian army and security institutions, while fighting enemies that have used children as suicide bombers to attack mar markets and other soft targets, remain committed to human rights. In fact, in 2016, the Nigerian army launched a human rights desk to better identify and respond to such cases. We're not perfect, but we investigate, 
we're transparent and we act. We're a country under the rule of law and due process. Our country safeguards the freedom of religion, speech, and association. Nigeria is closer than it looks. The fragility of democracy, climate change, migration issues, the challenge of violent extremism, and other organized crime. These are America's issues, everyone's issues, and Nigeria is on the front line. To reiterate, the best way to fix the problem is at source. As a regional leader that has demonstrated its credentials and capacity to address insecurity, we need the weapons, equipment, technical support, and capacity building to counter terrorism, insecurity, and disinformation. But we're seeking partnerships, not handouts. Partnerships that can help keep our country and the wider region safe and stable, laying the foundation for sustainable growth, particularly in the wake of the African continental free trade area. The world is in a flux, but the relationship between Nigeria and the United States can transcend the challenges of today. Let us embrace the possibilities of tomorrow by promoting democracy, driving inclusive development, making the most of our demography, and strengthening links with our diaspora, in line with the President Bola Tinubu's, uh, with President Bola Tinubu's doctrine of 4D diplomacy. Together, we can endure an ever-changing global landscape and leverage our collective strengths to foster an environment that encourages real mutual benefit and upholds the dignity of our peoples. Together, as a spirit of unity and determination, with a spirit of unity and determination, we can chart a new path forward for peace, stability, and prosperity. Thank you all for your attention.